Okay then gang, so in this video what I'd like to do is create a cloud function that is going to allow us now to add a new tutorial request. So eventually a user is going to type something in here, submit this, that is going to call a callable cloud function, which is then going to take this data, it's going to check that the user is authenticated, so they have a user account, and if they are, and everything's fine with the data, then it's going to save that tutorial to the database. So what I'm going to do is split this into two videos. We're going to do the cloud function first in this video, and then in the next one, we're going to call that cloud function from the front end. So let's go to our index.js file, which is in the functions folder. And beneath these two cloud functions we created over the last couple of tutorials, we'll do another one. And this is going to be an HTTP callable function. And it's going to be for adding a request tutorial request right so then first of all we need to say exports dot and give this function a name i'm going to call it add request but again call it what you will and that's equal to functions dot https dot on call and remember this fires a callback function when this cloud function is called and that callback function takes in two parameters data and context so this thing right here, this data, remember, is data we send to the function. Now, ultimately, that's going to be data that comes from the front end when we add a request right here. So this data. Now, the context over here, this contains useful information, including the authentication state of the user that made this request. So say I'm on the website and I'm not logged in. Say, for example, I just managed to get past this screen over here by going to the um, dev tools and deleting it if I can. Let me just cross those off, get rid of that. And if I try to add a request now, if I make that and it calls this cloud function, we can detect from this context object that the user is not authenticated, they're not logged in. And so therefore we can say, well, okay, if you're not logged in, I'm not gonna let you save this data to the database. Instead, I'm gonna throw an error and send that back to the client, the browser, okay? So we can do that check first of all, because that's the first thing I ultimately want to do. I want to check if the user is authenticated. So I'm going to say if, and it's going to be context dot auth. Now then, this right here evaluates to true or false. And that is going to evaluate to true if a user is logged in, if they are authenticated. If they're not, then it's going to evaluate to false. So at the minute, this code block is only going to fire if the user is authenticated, if they are logged in. Now, I don't want that to be the case. I want this to fire only if they're not logged in. So what I'm gonna do is place an exclamation mark before that, and that reverses the evaluation. So now, if they're not logged in, this will fire. If they are logged in, it will just bypass this. So what do we wanna do if a user is not logged in? Well, we could send them a nasty message, but all I'll do is throw an error right here, and I'm gonna say throw new, and the way we throw an error in Firebase functions is by using the functions object, and then saying .https, and it's gonna be an HTTPS error instance, okay? Now, this right here takes a couple of arguments. The first argument is gonna be an error code. So it's gonna be any one of these things that Firebase allows right here. Now, you can read more about these on the Firebase website. Let me get rid of that. If I go over here, you can read about what each one of these different error codes means right here. What I'm gonna do is use the one to do with authentication, which is somewhere there, unauthenticated. So I'm gonna copy that error code. And by the way, I'll leave this link down below so you can read more about these. And I'm gonna paste that error code right in here. Okay, so that's the first argument right there. The second one is any kind of message you want to send along with this error, then we can access that message in the front end if we wish. So I will say something like only authenticated users can add requests. Reasonable enough. Okay, so that's that bit done now. So this is checking if they're authenticated. If they're not, it's going to throw a new error and it's going to send that error to the client and it's not going to go any further. 
Now, if they are authenticated, it's gonna skip this altogether, or rather it's gonna skip this inside altogether, and then we'll do a second check. And the second check I want to do is to make sure that the length of the data, the text, is not greater than a certain amount of characters, for example, 30 characters. So when a user tries to add a request, if the length of that request is gonna be over 30 characters, then I'm gonna send some kind of error back that says it must be 30 characters or less because I don't want loads of text in each tutorial request, just something simple. So I'm gonna do another if check right here. And that if check is gonna say if data dot text dot length is over 30, then inside here, we're gonna throw a different kind of error. Now, where am I getting this from? Well, remember, this is data that comes from the call from the front end. So when I make the call from the front end in our front end code, I'm going to detect what a user types in there. I'm gonna call that property text when I send it to the cloud function, and therefore we can access that text property on the data that's sent with it. Then I'm checking the length of that text because you can check the length of a string, right? To make sure it's not over 30. If it is over 30, then this code block will fire and will throw a new error. So instead of typing that out from scratch, because I'm super lazy, I'm gonna copy that and paste it right here. And this error code is not gonna be unauthenticated. Let's see what we have. Mm, I'll go with invalid arguments. And then right here, I'm gonna delete that and I'm gonna say request must be no more than 30 characters long. All right, so that makes sense. So now, if they're authenticated, it will skip this, it will move to the next one. If it's over 30, then it will throw this error and it's gonna to say to the user or send back to the client this message, request must be no more than 30 characters. Then we can handle that error in our own way in the client. Okay, so if both of these are passed, if we get beyond both of those if checks, at this point, this is the point when we want to actually create a new request document in the database because we've satisfied these conditions now. So what I'm going to do is say admin.firestore because we're using the Firestore database, then .collection to get a reference to a specific collection and this collection is gonna be called requests. Now, again, we don't already have this requests collection set up yet, but it doesn't matter because the first time this happens, if it doesn't see a requests collection, it's gonna create one for us on the fly, which is nice. And then we want to add a document to this collection. So this document is gonna have two properties, the text, which is gonna come from the data. So data.text, remember, that's the thing that we get inside the function that we send from the front end. And then the second property is gonna be upvotes. And it's gonna start out at zero whenever we create a new request. Now upvotes is gonna keep track of how many people voted for this tutorial. If you upvote it, it's gonna increase this by one later on. And later on as well, when it's finished, the tutorial request with the most upvotes is gonna be at the top, then the next most upvotes and so forth going down, and the bottom one is gonna have the least amount of upvotes, okay? So it's ranking them. All right then, so now I think that's pretty much done, but we do need to return something here, remember? When we do a callable function, we need to return something to the client. So what I'm gonna do is return this promise. So it's going to perform this action which is asynchronous and it's going to return that promise to the user so whatever the result of this thing right here is it's going to return that back to the client and we can handle that there so that is pretty much it we're creating this callable function we're checking a couple of conditions the authentication first of all using the context object and then also the text length and then finally if these are fine then we're saving a new document to the request collection with the text sent along to this function on the data and we're setting up votes to zero then returning that promise to the user on the front end so that's it from the server side all we need to do now is save this and deploy so let me come down here and say firebase deploy only functions like so, and this will deploy these now to Firebase. 
Okay, so once that is done, I'm just going to go over to my console and two functions just to make sure we have this here now. And we can see now this one here, the request, which is add request, that is up. So in the next video, what we're going to do is call this from the front end so that we can add new requests to the database.